This program was developed by Austin Pets Alive's successful barn cat program located in Austin, Texas. For more information directly regarding their program, please view the video, A Model Program, Austin Pets Alive, Barn Cat Program. Once a cat has been accepted into your relocation program, she will hopefully have an adoptive home ready to go immediately. However, this may not always be the case. You will need a plan for what type of housing your community cats will stay in while they are in your program. Fortunately, there are several options. The goal for any community cat relocation program is to get the cat to his new home as quickly as possible. This is the best way to minimize cage time, which is particularly stressful for unsocialized cats. The ideal timeline once a cat has been selected for the relocation program is during the first 48 hours, the cat should be spayed or neutered, including the ear tipping. They should be vaccinated and had any other needed medical services. Up to the 72 hour mark, they should be recovering from sterilization. They should receive a medical release and delivered to their new home. During the recovery period and until an adoptive home is found, the community cat should be kept in a separate quiet area from the rest of the shelter to reduce stress. There are several options for housing the cats during this period. There are a few examples that have been used by other organizations. There are multiple different types of housing you can choose from. The general rule of thumb is to choose what works best for your organization and the cats in your program. Don't be afraid to think outside of the box. Here are just a few of the different types of indoor and outdoor housing options to consider. Some indoor housing options are shelter cage housing or relocation crate housing. Some outdoor housing options are chicken coops to build your own enclosure or buy a pre-built enclosure. The first indoor housing option is perhaps the simplest and easiest for relocation programs that are just starting up. This option simply uses the cages at your shelter or ordering additional ones to put into a separate indoor building. Often this housing option is not the best for community cats, as it can be fairly stressful being housed in a shelter environment. However, sometimes it is the only available option. The following tips are ways to minimize the cat's stress levels and keep everyone safe. If possible, try to separate the cats in the relocation program from the rest of the shelter, preferably in a quiet area away from any hustle and bustle. This will help keep their stress level down and also function as a form of quarantine. Feral cat dens or some other type of apparatus that provides the cat with visual security are very useful, actually essential with this type of housing as they provide a good spot for the cats to hide that is easy for people to manage safely. Cover the front of the cage with a towel or some other material. This elevates the cat's sense of visual security and will greatly help lower the stress level of the cat. Place a warning sign on the front of the cage that asks visitors to that area to be quiet and also lets them know not to directly handle these cats. Finally, clean these cages frequently if necessary. Unsocialized cats are notoriously messy and when they are stressed, this trait worsens, but be aware that cleaning the cage is just one more source of stress for this cat. The second indoor housing option is the use of relocation crates. Relocation crates are simply large plastic or airliner dog crates. These crates should be large enough to comfortably fit two cats inside. In the picture, there is an adult Labrador retriever next to the relocation crate to help you gauge how large the crate should be. Line the bottom of the crate with newspaper to help with any mess and cleanup. Place some sort of hidey box in the back of the box with the opening facing the opposite side of the crate and not the opening of the crate. Feral cat dens, again, are ideal for this, but the hidey box can be anything from a small cat carrier to a tipped over cardboard box. Make sure there is plenty of soft bedding inside. Place a litter pan as close to the front of the crate as possible. This is to make it easy to clean as well as keep the mess from the cat as far away from the food and water and the cat's hiding spot as possible. Once the relocation crate is set up, you can transfer the cat or cats into the crate. 
Transferring from a live trap is the easiest. Simply open the relocation crate door, put the trap inside as far as possible, aiming it toward the hidey box. Put your body up against the gap in the open crate door so the cat does not see a wide path to freedom. Then open the trap guillotine door and gently encourage the cat into the hidey box. Relocation crates can be very handy for a couple of different reasons. They make it easy to transport this temporary home for the cat to a new location. They can also be used as temporary housing option when you initially drop the cat off at her new adoptive home. This consistent housing at the shelter, when being transported, and as temporary housing at the new home makes the transitions much less stressful for the cat. Finally, just as with the other indoor housing options, do your best to keep the crates in a quiet area to reduce the stress level of the cats. Community cats may often be more comfortable outdoors versus indoors, as this is where they come from. So outdoor housing options are a great option for housing cats in your relocation program. Chicken coops make excellent feral cat habitats. As a bonus, they can easily be found on Craigslist and other advertising venues for a very low price and sometimes even for free. They can always be modified to fit the taste of your organization and the cats who will be housed in them. One step up from a chicken coop, but still an inexpensive option, is to build your own enclosure from scrap. Your supplies would include wood, some kind of chicken wire or horse wire, and hardware cloth. Make sure that you don't leave any fencing space that exceeds more than two inches, as cats can fit through a three inch hole or manipulate the metal to make a larger hole. The enclosure will also need a floor because cats can and will dig their way out if given the opportunity. The image shown here is of an enclosure built for Austin Pets Alive's relocation cat program. Blueprints and additional pictures can be found in the resource section of this course. Another option for outdoor housing is to purchase pre-built outdoor cat habitats. Although they can be a bit more pricey, they work great as well.